Hello, peeps. Good morning. <laughs> I just filmed about a third of this video and then realized it wasn't recording. So here we go again. I'm going to be talking about intuition today in your writing and in your life and why I make certain decisions that I do as an author. If that sounds interesting, pull up a chair, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join my little community here, and we'll get started. So yes, as I said, I already tried to film this once and it didn't work because I hadn't hit the record button. So onward, latte of the day. Sugar-free caramel vanilla, triple shot, of course, with ice, because I like my uh, because I like my lattes iced. Yum. Coffee makes me so happy, and I'm so happy I can have it again. Um, if you want to know about that, look at some of my other videos. I have a chronic illness. I couldn't drink coffee for several years. It's stabilizing. I'm able to add coffee back in. And exciting news, people, for me, I've been able to eat some tomatoes. Not a lot, but I can eat some tomatoes again. And since they've been my favorite food in the whole world since I was a little girl, that makes me very happy. They've been out of my diet for about four years now. And I'm just so grateful to my new doctor for helping me learn how to stabilize the MCAS and maybe, maybe put it in remission. I'm feeling so much better. Back to intuition, which also oddly plays into my diet. Intuition is a feeling, but it's also a knowing. I always say head and heart can lie, but your gut tells you the truth. So Weaving Winter comes out Sunday. An odd day, I know, but I think I blipped when I put the release date down. But it comes out Sunday, and it's different than what I usually write. I usually write urban fantasy, some paranormal romance, urban fantasy romance, paranormal everything, basically. But this is romanticy, which is another name for romantic fantasy. And it's a trilogy, so it's a story in three parts. I have not written this professionally before. And I'm very happy with what I've done for the first book and looking forward to writing the next two books. But it's definitely a departure than what I typically write. Now, why did I shift? Well, there are several reasons. And there's a Kiersey poking her head out. <laughs> hey, Kiersey. Yeah, we see your pretty tail. Pardon me, I get distracted by my cats. They're gorgeous. They're fun. And, you know, I just, I squirrel in on them. So when I was a little girl, I grew up on the golden age of science fiction. The pulp writers, the classics. I grew up in the 60s. I was born in 61. So yes, I am 63 years old. And I grew up on Isaac Asimov, I grew up on Ray Bradbury, I grew up on Arthur C. Clarke, and all those authors back then, of which very few were women. And that was discouraging, because I always knew I wanted to be a writer, and I knew I wanted to write fantasy and science fiction. So with no women role models, it was difficult. But I was determined. And over the years, I wrote epic fantasy. I wrote what's called romanticy today. Fantasy romance slash romantic fantasy. 
But when I got published, it was with Paranormal Mysteries. And actually, the Chins in China series was not a cozy series when I submitted it. Berkeley asked me to turn it into a cozy series. You would not believe some of the stuff I had to take out of Ghost of a Chance to get them to accept it. I wanted to write thrillers. I wrote the Paranormal Mysteries. I wrote a very short-lived non-paranormal mystery series. And then I wrote Otherworld, Urban Fantasy, slash Romance. And they labeled a paranormal romance. It's one six of one, half a dozen of the other. How did I find my way back to romanticy? Well, in the past couple of years, my intuition has been telling me you need to shift genre a little. Urban fantasy, A, is not selling that well right now. And B, I just needed to shift. I just, my gut told me. My head was going, but, but it's been years since I've written this. Do I really want to try this? And my heart was going, I love both, but... You know, it's like, are my readers going to accept this shift? But my intuition was telling me you need to do it. And so, yeah, I I am listening to my intuition. Now, that's not going to be the only thing I write. But it is going to be part of my inclusive genre stable that I write. Usually, your intuition will prompt you for a reason. I don't think I've ever heard of anyone's actual intuition not having a good reason for pushing them. As I said, head and heart can lie. Your head can go, well, logically, this doesn't sound like it should work. And your heart can go, but I love this instead of that. But your gut, that voice deep inside, will go, no, you need to listen to me. You need to pay attention. Being an intuitive writer means you listen to your intuition as you go along. You play. You're what's commonly known as a pantser. Do I plot my books? No, because I realize that my subconscious knows better than my conscious on what I need to write. Now, I will write a synopsis of about a page and a half of the highlights because I generally know beginning. I generally know a couple major things that happen. And I know mostly about the ending. How I get from point A to point B to point C to point D, totally up to my intuition, totally up to my subconscious. I suppose I'm not 100% intuitive because I do know a few highlights, but I think most intuitive writers do. I don't think any of us really ever start out not knowing what we're writing. Although, honestly, Ghost of a Chance. I didn't know what I was writing when I started that book. I just wanted to write something. I'd had a really rough time for about a year and a half. I'd burned out. I'd had a lot of losses in my life. At that point, my mother had died recently. And I was tired of writing the nonfiction. And so I just sat down and started typing. And it ended up being Ghost of a Chance. So I didn't really know what I was writing. I didn't know the end of the book. I didn't even know I was writing a mystery until I was partway through. And I think that is intuitive writing as its best. I didn't have anything to lose, so I could trust it totally. And that's another thing that can interfere with us listening to our intuition is the fear of losing something, the fear of, but what if I do this and I lose my job? What if I do this and I, and the book doesn't sell? What if I do this and I lose a friend? What if I do this and 
I lose my house. Um, and there's not a good answer to that, except that if your inner voice, that little voice that tells you the truth, is absolutely set on something, then it's sometimes more dangerous not to listen to it than to listen to it. And you can always change course midway. Well, maybe not always. I'm, I'm going to put a caveat there because I know somebody's going to say, well, you can't change here. Or you can't change there. True. There are places where you just can't go back to where you were. But you can always make the choice to divert off to a different direction. I think there can be a few checkpoints where you ask yourself some questions. Is this coming from a place of wish fulfillment? For example, if you fall in love with somebody who doesn't know you exist and you decide to move to their city and follow them around, that's not your intuition. That's called stalking. That's wish fulfillment. If you have a feeling that you need to move to another town because you just keep getting that inner prompt and you can do so without putting yourself in jeopardy, then maybe you need to try it. Maybe you need to go there and visit and see if you can find out why you need to move there, why you feel like you need to be, why you feel you belong there. Same with shifting genres like I'm doing with the romantic scene. You know, there is just that inner gut prompt that I need to change directions. And yes, urban fantasy is not selling that well. But there's something about the romantic scene that I need for my writing, that I need to do, that I need to explore. And my readers tend to like fantasy one way or another they like fantasy so it's not that big of a leap to take a chance and try a different direction on it that's a considered risk i often encourage people when you're about to take a risk is it a considered risk or is it just blind jumping into the depths? Now, I've done the blind jump a number of times. And it worked out. It worked out for me because I listened to my gut on such a deep level that I knew there was no choice. I had to make that shift. So you want to ask yourself, what are the risks involved if I try this new prompting? And as a writer, the risks may be alienating your readers. But you may find a vast you know, number of other readers. It can be challenging yourself and trying something that you're afraid you can't do, that you're afraid you'll fail at. But if you never attempt something, you'll never know if you can do it. If you sit back and go, I'm afraid that taking that chance is going to make me fall on my face. Well, sometimes we all need to fall on our face and pick ourselves up again. And sometimes the fall actually is what we need to learn. I, I have tried in the past writing a couple things and realized I can't do that. I cannot do that. The Bath and Body series. Three books I had with Berkeley. Non-paranormal. I hated writing those books. I don't hate the characters. I liked my characters. But I hated not writing paranormal. It wasn't me. It didn't it felt like I cut off an entire part of life when I cut out the paranormal. And I had to write the three books because they were under contract. I mean, I could have given the advances back, but I probably would have never worked with a publisher again. 
And I was trying at the time to see myself there because at that time, that was the main way to get published. So I wrote the books. And I knew halfway through the first one, I would not write more books in that series. And I actually didn't do much promotion on them because I didn't want them to sell well because I didn't want to have to make the decision to turn down a contract if they did sell well. I know that sounds odd, but I just knew I couldn't write more. I couldn't write more Chins and China books at this point. They aren't in my wheelhouse anymore. I loved my characters. I loved the world. I loved the town. But my intuition knows that I can't go that direction anymore. That's not who I am as a writer anymore. And so I did what I could to leave the characters in a comfortable place. And moved on from that series. So you have to ask yourself a lot of questions when you are planning a ch change, when you are planning to make a move from your regular position. And consulting your intuition is pretty much listening to that little voice inside that goes, I know you need to do this. It's not that voice that goes, gee, it might be fun to do this. Or, oh, gee, they're making a ton of money, so I'm going to try this. Or, I hate the company, but, you know, I could use it as a stepping stone. You still may want to make those choices at some point. But do so fully aware that maybe that's not your intuition talking. How I get to the place of where I can hear my intuition. One, you need to not be panicking. Panic will not, panic will clutter your mind and it will clutter your insights a lot of times. So try to find a space where you're comfortable and quiet and can hear those inner voices Try not to be super enthusiastic over something at the time and try not to be too depressed. I, I suppose what I'm saying is try to find a neutral ground to where you can listen to yourself and hear what your gut is saying. Some people find that through journaling. Try writing it out. Some people find it through meditation. Sometimes you'll be in the shower and just that intuitive flash hits you and you know, oh, I have to do this. I have to try this. Whatever it takes for you to be able to reach that inner guidance, try and set up that situation for yourself. Whether it be mood music, whether it be a walk outside in the park, whether it be just driving for a while and not having any place to go. We all have our different ways of reaching that place where we can hear ourselves think, where we can hear the wheels turn in our gut. I hope this has been helpful to some degree. I'm going to be trying another genre next year, Faded Mates, that I have never written, but my gut tells me I need to write this. It's been on my mind for quite a while. So we'll see how that goes. And I have a bunch of other things I want to try too. And it feels like I've reached that place in my career where it's time to branch out, try some new things. My intuition is telling me that's the only way to grow now as an author is to step out and try a few new things because I've been writing the same things for years, same, not the same series, but the same basic genres. And I need to challenge myself at this point. So tell me, have you been thinking of doing anything? 
your intuition encouraging you to go try something new? Are you going to do it? Let me know in the comments and I will see you next week and have a great, wonderful week. And I will talk to you later and join me over on Patreon, if you will. Um, run out and grab your copy of Weaving Winter because I think you're going to love it. I hope you do. Bye.